Hello everybody, so it's me Argent and I'm here with Rain. And I wouldn't say she's getting to be a big kitty, but she's getting to be a very long kitty. So, maybe she'll grow into her length, maybe not, but as adorable as she is, that's not, she's not the topic of this video. The topic of this video is voting. Now a lot of people in these circles just don't believe in voting. Um, they take the perspective, all the parties are the same, all the parties suck. Even if there's a party that's not that bad, there's no chance they'll ever be allowed to gain power. And if we all just didn't vote, it would delegitimize the system and cause it to collapse. Some people kind of view it as a form of accelerationism to um, delegitimize liberal democracy. And I, I kind of get that. I think they're very, very wrong and naive in that perspective, but I, I do understand where they're coming from. So let's just go into this. So I always vote. Um, I voted in every election. Um, kind of cursed Argent fact, the first ballot I ever cast in an election was for the Federal Liberal Party. But that's a story for another time, though. That was the uh, first election I ever voted in. And then I think, I think my second ballot was for the Conservative Party. I, generally speaking, just vote for whatever the like, horrible center-right party of the moment is in Canada. But, yeah, I've always voted. So, the first reason I think it is important to vote is it's the only legally binding way you have to influence your government. Very rarely do you have referendums, even that's a form of voting. You don't get to express your opinion in a legally binding way any, any other time. So, like, even when they do, like, a public consultation, it's just there to be smoke and mirrors. Because, like, I know when they were asking for public consultation on, like, stuff like euthanasia, it didn't really matter if all the religious groups sent in complaints or whatever. They were never going to reverse course. And you can get into scenarios, like, I guess an example would be, like, with the bailout, where, like, 80% or 90% of the public is against something. And they can protest or do whatever they want, but there's no legally binding way of changing the government. <clears throat> In most Western countries, at least, um, and this is changing increasingly with, like, Trump and that sort of thing, they will, to a certain extent, at least, accept the result of elections. So if a party loses power, they lose power. If a party gains power, they gain power. Uh, you're really going at it. Now, there are exceptions to this, like France implemented... Uh, instant runoff voting to prevent the Front National from gaining any seats... And some countries will change electoral systems. But we'll get into that in a moment. So it is really your only opportunity to change your government in a legally binding fashion. Second, it's free. Um, voting is free. It depends upon the country, I guess. In Canada, for instance, um, it's pretty easy to vote. Um, you can vote for weeks in advance. You literally, they send out voter cards, but you can just walk in. Uh, they assign you a poll station, and you just walk in there, you give them your ID, and they give you your ballot. So there's no cost to voting, and it's actually pretty easy. Like, generally speaking, because I always vote ahead of election day, and it normally takes me about 15 minutes tops. And sometimes my polling place is so close, I can just walk there. And I normally go for a walk every day anyway, so I just walk over. And yeah, compared to all the other ways you have of um, participating, it's it just doesn't cost anything. It really isn't that time consuming. I don't know what it's like in countries other than Canada. But here it's extremely easy and um, straightforward to vote. So there's that aspect to it. So thirdly, I mean, because it's free and it's your only real chance, there's no real reason not to vote. I mean, you can say, well, the major parties suck. Like in Canada, you can say the Liberal Party sucks, the NDP sucks, and the Conservatives suck. But normally there's some sort of like LARP party or like crappy third party running who's at least more in the right direction. Like if you live in the United States, I think in most states you can vote for the Constitution Party. Or there might be like some conservative or Christian party or something that you can vote for. And they might only get a couple hundred votes or whatever, but you're still legally trying to participate in the process. 
Now, people will say, and one of the common arguments is, if we just um, don't vote, it'll delegitimize the system. See, that's not what happens when people don't vote. They view the answer as being electoral reform. And electoral reform makes our situation much worse. It doesn't delegitimize the situation. It makes it worse. So the kind of things that you get in a, um, uh, a low voter turnout uh, system is you'll get stuff like proportional representation. You'll get um, yeah, proportional representation. The, the lowering the voter age is another one. Um, instituting ranked ballots is another one. Uh, stuff, hey, get off my foot. <laughs> um, ranked ballots are another one. Mandatory voting is one. Um, getting rid of voter ID laws, online voting. Like, all this kind of stuff is what they do. They, it doesn't delegitimize the system. They don't accept that people are going to vote because they hate the parties in power. They try to make some structural reform. And all of these structural reforms make the situation much worse for us. Because, like, 16-year-olds are going to vote for, like, I don't know, the Green Party or, like, some, like, the Democratic Socialists of America or something. They're not, despite what the memes are about the Zoomers, they're not going to vote probably in our direction. Also, like, the situation you have in Canada is you have a, well, it depends on the province, like a three-and-a-half-party system. I guess the Greens normally get a decent percent of the vote. So, like, how it works here is you have the Socialist Party, the Liberal Party, and the Conservative Party. So the benefit of the Liberal Party, and this is why they wanted to implement ranked choice voting, is because uh, conservatives will put liberal as their second choice, and New Democrats will put liberals as their second choice. So unless either the liberals, unless the conservatives or the NDP have an outright majority in a particular region, the liberals are going to de facto win every seat. Now, there are areas like that in Alberta, but that was like the response to declining voter turnout. It was, OK, we're just going to implement this this system. The other alternative was PR. So if proportional representation would have gone through, we would have had a permanent coalition of the Green Party liberals and New Democrats running Canada forever. And as bad as the conservatives are, um, a liberal party with absolutely no opposition is a very scary idea. Like, imagine the United States if they lowered, um, if they instituted online voting. Online voting, I'd imagine, is extremely easy to to um, do fraud on. Because I know what happened, like, with me, because they had that electoral commission, and I did, like, a video where I voted, like, three or four times. They're like, vote on what type of electoral form you want. So I, like, use, I just entered different, like, postal codes, and I voted, like, three or four times on camera. And I assume stuff like that's pretty easy to do with electronic voting. Um... And that sort of thing. So that's the kind of thing that they will start implementing. Uh, they aren't going to just not accept that things are going down. Now, what does actually delegitimize the system is when a party gets a lot of seats but isn't allowed to participate in the government. So, like, I think it does delegitimize the Swedish system when the Swedish Democrats are, like, the second largest party and they're excluded from government. Um, same thing with the Front National getting such a large percentage of the vote, but getting like no seats. I think that that actually does legitimately delegitimize the system. But like I know my friend Torelli and he sometimes comes on and he does Holy Roman Empire videos, but he didn't really want to vote for the conservative party. So we have like some minor Christian party in Canada called the Christian Heritage Party. So he just voted for them. And he's like, I don't know, they're pro-life. It's the best way. It's the only real way I have to vote against abortion. Um, the vote for Canada being a conservative country. Um, and that's pretty much like, I guess all, that's kind of it. It's, it's free. It's the only really legally binding option you have. And not voting doesn't help. I guess the other thing is, if for no other reason, uh, in the words of Mundane Matt, trigger the libs, the libs. Um, 
voting for people that everyone you hate hates uh, has a certain satisfaction to it, to be honest. Like, um, I think it was kind of interesting because Michael Moore was being interviewed about why he thought Trump would win. And he said, think, put your mind in space and in the, in the, put, put yourself in the place of the average person. Every single person who the average person thinks has screwed him over the years, um, all those people were telling them not to vote for Trump. I would say it's almost worth going out and voting for him just because of all the salt. Like when they were having to bring in like therapy pets and people were like having mental breakdowns and stuff like that. It's almost worth it just for that. But I mean, the simple matter is at the end of the day, in a lot of countries, the collapse isn't happening anytime soon. Um, accelerationism just isn't going to do it. So like for my part, it's like, do I want to live in a society where in a country where they enforce some basic laws or that's like a complete anarcho tyranny? So like in the last election, um, the conservatives said they were going to punish members of ISIS. They were going to stop illegal border crossings and they're going to do some like other stuff like that. And that stuff is all super lame. Don't get me wrong. But I'll take that over, like, no, like, just letting, like, random people across the border. <laughs> and, I mean, it's it's like the Republicans might suck, but look at what, like, happened with Democrats during the last, uh, during Black Lives Matter. So they suck, but it can always be worse. Keep that in mind. And if the system's going to collapse, it's going to collapse from other things. It's not going to collapse because you didn't vote or any number of people didn't vote. They'll just come up with some bullshit reason for why it wasn't the case and use it as an excuse to make the system even worse somehow. So let's see here if I can just get Rain to come out to say goodbye to everybody. Okay, Rain, come on. So yeah, that's about um, all I have to say. Let's just say goodbye to Rain. Hey, girl. You're a good girl, aren't you? Are you going to vote in the next election, Rain? Are you going to vote for Donald Trump? Ow. Ow. Are you going to bite me? Hey, Rain, what do you think of Black Lives Matter? Oh. There we go. Well, all I can say is black and white cats' lives matter. Here, Rain, look at the camera. Meow. Someone's not being cooperative. There we go. Good kitty. Oh, well, God bless everybody and talk to you soon.